So area blocks and bricks within PIMCore is sort of a toolkit for you to build documents dynamically. If we look at the home page, we can actually see that the whole home page is made out of bricks. If we click here to highlight the editable elements, you can see that basically everything, everything lights up. Like this, for example. This is a slider and you can dynamically put in the number of slides that you wish. And if we go now on the fourth slide, we can see that it doesn't have any content. And if I would, for example, take an asset and drag and drop it here, that image would show. A thumbnail would generate for that image. And I would also be able to put in the title, the action button if needed, and the subtitle. For now, I'm just going to leave it at three. Also, you can see that we have a lot of different area bricks on this page. I'm pretty sure that almost, well, not all of the area bricks are allowed on this page, but most of them. That's also a great thing, is that with an actual area block, you can control which bricks can be used on that particular page because maybe some particular bricks don't really have a use case for a particular document or page. So let's go upon creating an area brick. As you can see, we're going to use this test document that I have. And here you can see that I don't have the button for adding bricks on this particular page. The reason for that is that if we go here to SEO and settings under controller and action, you can see that I'm using the default controller, the test action, which means that if we go here to the default controller and we see the test action, it doesn't return a particular template, which means we're using the naming convention. So we should look in the templates folder for the default folder and the test.html.twig template. And in here, we don't have a PIMCore area block, so we are not allowed to put within this particular template. I'm just going to show you how easy it actually is to create your custom bricks, which you can then add onto your page. Here in the demo, it's particularly easy uh, because we already have a lot of bricks created each of them having their own use case. But let's say that we wanted to create a new brick. What is a brick class actually made of? The most important thing here is that it extends the abstract every brick. The namespace of where you put your brick is also important. So you would put it in the source folder under document and the under the area brick folder. The only thing that you need to define is the get name method. And if we go to the documentation for bricks, we can see that we can also define it within the services YAML file. If you were to define it within the services YAML file, it's only because you probably need to inject a certain service within uh, this class. If you don't need to inject anything, then there is no reason for, for you to define it within the services YAML. There are also some additional parameters that you can put, like the description, the template location, and whether or not this particular brick needs reload. This means if you were to change something within the brick, would this brick need to be reloaded? But for now, we're just going to, let's say, copy this hero teaser brick, call it test teaser, change the name of the class to test teaser, and change the name here to test teaser. This is the name that's actually going to be shown here when you click on the plus sign or you click on these arrows up and down. Basically, whenever you're going to be shown the bricks that can be added on a particular page. Now that we have our test teaser class created, we can go down here to the templates folder 
and your templates should be located under the areas folder and then it should be named by the naming convention which is defined by your class name so if my name of the class is test teaser I should create a template called test dash teaser click on OK and now we have our new test teaser area brick created. For example, we wanted this area brick to only have a input and a headline. We would just uh, delete the rest that we don't need. You can write anything that you basically wish for this brick to do. Within the bricks, you would use the PIM core editables, which are defined here. For our case, if we just wanted to show the headline and the summary, we can just leave it as PIM core inputs. And now you're basically ready to use your brick. The only thing that we need to do now is go, go to the according template. And let's go back to the documentation. And if we scroll down, we can see how we can add an area block in which we define which bricks can be added to that block. You can also see that we have some kind of advanced options that we can use. We can include multiple bricks that can be added into this area block. And right now I'm just going to, I'm just going to copy this. We're not going to have the sorting since we're only going to allow one brick to be added into this block. And in this block, the name of our brick is test-teaser, test-teaser. And we'll remove everything else so that only this brick is allowed. Let's go back to the PIM core administration and into your document. If you refresh the document, you'll see that we now have the plus sign located here and here you can use either one if we click on the test teaser we'll now see that we have the test headline and test summary if we save this on the page and go back to PIM core well to the PIM core front end refresh the page we can now see that we have the test headline and the test summary on the page. Area blocks and bricks have a really wide use case. Really depends on what you what you need to show on your site. As you saw on the home page, they have a wide range of area bricks with a wide range of utilities. As you can see, even the footer is editable. And if I right click on this and click on open, it will open the footer page and in the footer page you can see that we have other bricks which are then used and rendered on the front end to give you all of these links and the headlines for all of the links as well as the option to actually add a logo. Hope the video helped you and if you want to learn more about PIMCore you can check out my Udemy course called Learning PIMCore from Zero to Hero where I will show you all of the steps from creating a project, buying and setting up a server, as well as deploying your project. Hope to see you there.